Usually I try to think of a quirky, gimmicky, and perhaps even a smart intro, but uh, today I got nothing, so... Hey guys, welcome back, as always, my name is Lazar, and today, my friends, we're gonna be revisiting the Akshagara Prime, one of my favorite secondary weapons in Warframe. As per the usual, I'm gonna have a cheap build, something that a newer Tenno could possibly afford, but of course, we're gonna finish it all up with Prime Mods, Riven, basically, the end game setup. That said though, please keep in mind that my building guides usually take a more mm, new player friendly approach simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and why it should be built the way that we build it. So in case you're a vet and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Akshagara Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that just a couple of free shots. The Akshagara Prime is a semi-automatic secondary weapon with a hit scan attack and it might seem like it's firing two bullets at once when in fact it's actually a very very quick succession. So you get a magazine of 40 but effectively 20 shots since you will be consuming two ammo per shot. In terms of usability, there's not a lot to complain about outside of the whole semi-automatic trigger. This would be maximum rate of fire with no mods. You can achieve this very easily by binding your fire to your scroll wheel. I'm not entirely sure what you would do on console. Let me know in the comment section down below. Now the recoil on this one, considering the fire rate, isn't really all that bad. And the weapon is pretty accurate from 15 meters away. Take a look. Again, maximum rate of fire and most of the bullets are right in the middle of the crosshair. So nothing to complain about there unless you increase the fire rate to ungodly levels which is not exactly something that we do on semi-automatic weapons so do bear that one in mind other than that the reload is super quick it's accurate it's semi-automatic yes that's the issue but it is a hit scan attack with a very low recoil like i said before there's not a whole lot to complain about when it comes to usability on the ak jagara prime Mod capacity 60 out of 60 and if your comes with a measly 30 out of 30 jump into actions and plug in that auto king catalyst double that mod capacity but the question is is it worth investing a catalyst the time the forma into the actual gara prime and it definitely gets my vote it's a very strong and a very cool subjectively of course cool secondary weapon especially considering it's not a forma heavy weapon it comes by default with two v symbols or madurai also known as the polarity we use most often on weapons so as you can see mine has been format only three times should you unlock the weapon excellent slot or not uh, you know what you can leave this one locked it's fine i mean the weapon does have a slight recoil so let's plow on some fire rain just so you can see exactly what you can get out of that excellent slot okay so let's go little torrent yeah this is gonna be on the build but let's put animic agility for the kicks and the lules as well the lules hashtag lules 50 meters ah whatever meters here you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> you gotta love that. And even at full fire rate, after the weapon stabilizes and all whatnot, you still get decent accuracy. But if you unlock this one with a weapon Excellus adapter, whatever it's called, you can use steady hands by default too. You see that? It's got a dash polarity, so you don't need to change it, which reduces the weapon's recoil. And now, my friends. Whoa! Huh? How's that? like a million times better and i know it looks better but not only does it look better it feels like a million times better in actual gameplay so do bear that one in mind yes i would unlock this one is it necessary no of course not the accuracy is going to be 33.3 my friends i would not use magnum force on it it's, it's down to 11.8 and if i put on multi shoot a little bit of barrel diffusion a little bit of later tar in the usual scenario yes yes of course look at that oh god where the bullets go Sometimes they simply land outside of the crosshairs, but here's the cool part about the Akshagara. Do you see that the bullets always land in a vertical line? Always. I don't know why that is. It doesn't matter how far apart they are, they're always in a vertical line. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say when it comes to usability mods and power mods such as this one. Critical chance 18% with a 2.2x critical multiplier. 
weird, isn't it? Right now, don't worry, 18% is still worth using, especially considering we got Prime Pistol Gamba for secondary weapons, and this one, just this one alone, will pump it up to 51.7, and the critical multiplier, as you can see, is, in fact, above average. Fire rate of 10. It's a semi-automatic weapon. You know, pl plugging on a whole lot of fire rates is not really all that smart, especially considering you get 20 shots, then you reload. The magazine is 40, but you do consume two ammo per shot. Noise alarming, punch from 0 2. I hate punch through a 0 2 because it's like having punch through but not having punch through. It's like have a really small piece of cake. Nobody wants a really small piece of cake. You either give me a goddamn good slice of cake or you leave me alone. One of the two. You don't do that to a man. Give him like a tiny, li really thin piece of cake. Now the 0 0.2 sometimes is w good, actually, you can shoot through the Grenier Enforcer's frontal shield, you know, the, the, which one that you try to shoot through the little small peephole, but it doesn't go through because yay Warframe, yeah, basically that's what that one is good for. Reload of 1.4 seconds, which is mwah, bellissima, Riven Disposition of 3 out of 5, which is again pretty good, not a whole lot of players play with the Aggregata Prime, now the normal version, the Aggregata Gugu, uh, has 5 out of 5. You can play with that one, but honestly, this is the superior weapon. And status chance is high at 32% for a burst trigger. Now, the damage type. We got a full array of IPS. Total damage is 36, which is not bad. And you got a little bit of impact. And you got a little bit of puncture just to piss me off. It couldn't have just had slash and that's it. Apparently not, my friends. Now, for those of you that thought hemorrhage was the good up no it's not come on no it's it has only a little bit of impact forget about it no hemorrhage definitely not and speaking about definitely yes let's check out the standard build damage with hornet strike multi shot with battle diffusion and lethal touring critical chance critical damage pistol gamut target cracker of course we're gonna go with the normal mods initially and then we're gonna switch to prime mods simply because my friends not everybody has prime mods you gotta be understanding of the two the, the new tenno they are our lifeblood after all we got 260, 60 mods forming Vital Damage on the weapon with Frostbite and Pistol Pestilence. You farm Pistol Pestilence from Corrupted Void in the Void. Don't be intimidated. It's very easy. Just go public. Say, hey guys, I want to farm Vore a couple of times. I need some 60, 60 Toxin mods. Okay? Most Tano will be understanding and others won't be. So there you go. Frostbite. Now this is by doing the most challenging missions when I was a new Tano. These were spy missions. They were so bloody challenging. I failed them so often. But trust me, once you get the hang of it and if you need any guide to a spy missions, your truly's got all of them, so definitely go for these two, you will need them. In the excellent slot, we got steady hands, and this slot is open simply because this is your option slot. Plug into this one whatever you feel comfortable with. For example, a whole lot of players like Punch Through. Seeker, 2.1 meter for Punch Through. Don't get me wrong, Punch Through is a form of AoE in Warframe, and if you want to know how it works, click the cards right now. Here's another option, cheapo option. It's called Augur Pact, and this one will offer you 90% damage let's test the weapon out like this and then i'll show you a couple of other options eh eh Ogre pact is something like, that i like to use as a base just so i can get a base of feeling for what the weapon can do i'm showing you the screen so you can see i'm not cheating with any warframe buffs or anything of the sort there was something else i wanted to say but i forgot so there you go level 120 wait numlock level 120 corrupted heavy goons we're gonna spawn them and we're gonna go straight for headshots oh yes my friends i know these builds are like kind of samey samey ever since the mainline changes of 2020 which were like god awful sorry dear developer but they were thankfully we're gonna get some additional changes soon which will help build diversity hopefully straight for headshots the deal with any slash build, since this is obviously a slash build, hit a target till about 50% then watch the slashes deal the damage. I don't know if you noticed there, but we got 10 vital procs really easily and the slashes were up to 20 something. Now I'm going shot by shot just so you can see how the weapon, how basically the status effects are being applied constantly to the target. But of course you would go rapid fire in a normal mission or something like that. With the Aju Gugu Prime, I would hit to about 60, like that and then watch the slashes deal the damage. It's simply that powerful as a slash weapon. And yes, I am aware the irony is not lost and me laser, you build slash for primary, you build secondary, maybe you love hunter munitions. Sir, shut up! That's it! Don't give him any bad ideas, all right? The other day we were having a stream and somebody gave Marcus the idea of a stuck prime. Oh God, God, please no, God, no. So there you go, my friends. This is performance with a normal setup and I, it's good, it's good. Come on, it's good. For a secondary weapon right now in Warframe, doing this, cutting enemies to pieces, and that is important for Necros, by the way. 
as with any slash weapon, this is definitely a powerful secondary weapon, one that you gotta have in your arsenal, because here's the thing, my friends, from here on outwards, it only gets better. Now, I'll spare you the trouble. Instead of Ogre Pact, go with Carnage Stinger. This is a brand new mod, we didn't have this one last time we built the actual Google. So here you go, Carnage Stinger with 90% Slash and 60% Status Chance. And you're gonna say, dude, <laughs> Slash was already priority number one, are you sure that's not a waste? And you are half right, it's true, but you also got the Status Chance and besides more Slash means a higher chance of it proking. Another option outside of Carnage Stinger would be to go for another 60-60 mod. For example, you can go with Scorch. Yeah, it's also a very, very solid option. So do bear that one in mind. Let's test it out with Carnage Stinger really quick. We're gonna just shoot half of them, so we win a little bit of time. There we go. Take a look. Beautiful, absolutely freaking fantastic. One, two. I mean, I shot the target twice. I got five slashes, three vitals. It's not gonna be enough to kill it, but look at that. Look how the status applies to the target. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. And the thing is, you're gonna get the 10 vital procs, which is the maximum really, really quickly. I have this nagging feeling I forgot something. And now we're gonna quickly test it out with Prime Mods, just so we can see what kind of a difference we can get out of Prime Mods. Prime Pistol Gambit, Prime Target Cracker, and of course with Carnage Stinger. From my point of view, this would be the ideal non-Riven scenario. Once again, we're gonna go for headshots. I'm just gonna go shot by shot so you can see how fast you can completely annihilate a corrupted heavy goon. That was five shots? Five shots? Yeah, something like five shots. Rapid fire, absolutely bloody nuked. So yes, my friends, of course, prime mods make a difference. They're a lot stronger, which is why I'm really, really super excited for the galvanized mods. The problem with the galvanized mods coming to Warframe very, very soon is the fact that they're on kill, so it won't really help when you're meeting super, super high level targets. So do bear that one in mind. As you can see, Prime Mods are amazing. I definitely recommend them. If you don't have the necessary resources to get two at the same time, get Critical Damage over Critical Chance. So Prime Target Cracker over Prime Pistol Gambit in this case. Now, let's talk about Rivens, my friends. Are Rivens worth it for the actual Gara Prime? I can't tell you that. It's your game, your enjoyment, your resources, and your time. I can't tell you to go get out Riven for the actual Gara Prime, unless, of course, you enjoy the weapon. If this is your weapon, then definitely go and get a Riven, because the Riven Dispo is 3 out of 5, and the prices for an actual Google is not really terrible, okay? So you can get an unrolled one for, I think, 50 to 100 plants, something like that. You can get lucky with Kuva, or if you're Mr. Deep Pockets, you can buy an already really nicely rolled one. Minus impact, I don't know if it can roll minus impact or minus puncture, but if it can, then definitely get it with minus impact or minus puncture. It will provide not a huge benefit. There are weapons where minus IPS ribbons do provide a huge benefit, but not all of them. Don't chase after minus IPS no matter the weapon. That, in certain cases, it will actually hurt you. In this case, it can provide a marginal benefit because, again, the proc priority for impact and puncture isn't all that high. I would go for multi-shot because multi-shot, right? Damage and critical chance in this case. Or critical damage if you roll that one as well. Or if you get damage multi-shot, harmless negative, that is also very, very good. This one right here, critical chance, critical damage, punch through, is not, and minus damage to Grenier, is not how, is not even one of the best Rivens you can get for this one. But being a dispo, a 3 out of 5, will still make a significant difference in the weapon's performance. Allow me to demonstrate. One more time, the Corrupted Heavy Goons level 120. Gonna go shot by shot action. Three shots in the target, 10 vital procs already, and six slashes. Destroy! One, two, three, four. Four shots in the target, there are four slashes, seven vitals. That should be enough to not kill it. Hey! Close, but not close enough. As you can see, of course, a Riven will be making a difference. You gotta put in about five shots into a target normally to absolutely annihilate this level in this specific target. Again, if you're going down to Deimos, think about something else. You can't build this one for Corrosive, but the honest truth is, ever since the whole mainline changes of 2020, Corrosive hasn't really been all that fantastic. Hopefully, in the future, that will change. Now, my friends, there's still one more thing, which we do gotta do, and I do say we gotta do bump up everything with Warframe buffs, and for that we're gonna be using the ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding bust. What do you think about this fashion? Beautiful fashion, is it? I absolutely love it. Now, let's atone the guns to it. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I should be using this for the thumbnail. Beautiful, beautiful. 
When it comes to the actual buffs she'll bring to the table, of course in the aura slot corrosive projection against heavily armored targets, but I don't want you guys to feel forced into this one. Yes, it's one of the most powerful auras in Warframe, but if your Warframe build calls for something like, I don't know, power donation, growing power, or perhaps if you're more newer to Warframe, energy siphon is definitely a good idea. I remember when I was a newer Tenno, I always felt like I never had enough energy, and now I just drive, drop pizza like it's hot. So there you go my friends, don't feel forced into this one. Anyway, Arcanes are a lot more impactful to any weapon. Arcane Avenger R5, this one can be farmed from the third Eidolon down on Cetus, rank 5 on damage, 21% chance for 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. Keep in mind, this is a bonus additive after effect, simply stacking on top of what you already have, applying to primary, secondary and melee at the exact same time. From my humble point of view, is the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe. And considering I got a 75 right now with a 45, I'm going my friends to 100 and 20% so guaranteed crits out of my Akshagara as long as Avenger is up and I manage not to screw up the aiming so that you go. As for a secondary arcane, let's be honest, in this slot normally you will be using something like Energize or perhaps some additional armor but if you want to pump up the damage of your secondary even further then the arcane is called Precision also from the third Eidolon down on Cetus on headshot, come on it's not that hard, it's on headshot 100% chance for a massive 300% damage to secondary weapons for 18 seconds. So there you go. This is the test we're going to be running. No need for a sentinel since this is a secondary. We cannot use the vigilante trick. Vigilante trick. Level 155 for up that heavy goons. As per the usual, I'm going to unpause them so they can hit me and I can get my glorious, absolutely glorious buffs. Activate Empower, my Mirage has Empower, and then we're gonna activate her free ability for an absolutely outstanding damage increase. And finally, my friends, the moment you've been waiting for, her absolutely glorious clone. Beautiful. They don't make animations like that in Warframe anymore. Shot by shot action, and of course, we're gonna basically annihilate whatever. Now, they can die from the proc, or they can die straight off from the explosion. Take a look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely bloody fantastic. And there's plenty more ammo to spare. You absolutely annihilated everything, and now if you're running a Necros blowing up uh, the enemy like that, will get you more desecration. So do bear that one in mind. Now, of course, this is... Mirage Prime. Mirage Prime is the most powerful weapon buffer frame in Warframe. Some of you guys make that confusion and say, hey, uh, that means she's the most powerful Warframe, right? No, definitely not. She has issues when it comes to survivability, even after the whole shield gating thing. But when it comes to buffs, there's just nobody like Mirage Prime. As for the Akshagara Prime, once again, my friends, I highly recommend this weapon, and that's pretty much it. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also, in the comment section down below, if you want to suggest any particular type of content. Now, in all honesty, I can exactly promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week because sometimes these things take a while to make. But what I can promise you, I will be reading through each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.